Hey everybody, welcome to a special edition of my videos. This one we're going to be dealing with White Dwarf's new release, Imperial Knights. Yes, I was going to do this live, but I wanted to make sure of the release date first. So here we are, Imperial Knights. You hear it here first. What are they? If you play War Machine, Imperial Knights are basically... Colossals for 40k. Uh, these are what they call a new a new class called super heavy walkers. Let's get into. There's a lot of rules here, so I'm going to start with the basic ones first. First, uh, super heavy walkers are a detachment by themselves. Yes, that means if you want to, you can field imperial knights all by themselves as your army you need to take uh they come in groups of basically one to six uh and uh well you can do the points i'm not going to give away all the spoilers but you can imagine they're freaking expensive if uh six of them makes up an army do the math okay um other than that let's see what they got we got some exciting stuff here some exciting stuff here so they have, uh, let's see, their weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 4, strength 10, not surprisingly. Um, they got front armor 13, side armor 12, rear armor 12, initiative 4. It's pretty, pretty kind of surprising for something this huge, but I guess anything less, and you're going to ask yourself, what are you going to do? Uh, three attacks, six hull points, six Hull points. Now, if you want to get a little idea about the figure, the figure is probably about three times as massive as your standard Eldar avatar slash greater demon figure. So uh, a greater demon figure would probably go up about halfway, a little over halfway in the height, and probably yay, half as half as half the width. Okay. <clears throat> Now, if you don't take Imperial Knights as their own army, you can include them as an allied detachment in any Imperial army. Okay? Uh, again, taking, I guess, between um, uh, one to six. No, I'm sorry. If they're an allied detachment, they can only come in in a group of three, maximum of three. If they're their own army, then I guess you're taking two units of them in units of one, two, three. They use, for those who play Apocalypse, they use uh, D weapons. Um, so I guess that means that if you hit, a, the, the, if you roll a six on a penetrating on a vehicle, it just blows it the fuck up. Uh, even if it's a super heavy tank or whatever, it's just gone. I don't know. Uh, they also have the Invincible Behemoth Special Rules. So that's for Escalation and Apocalypse. Uh, other than that, let's go over it. So the Titans come, the, I mean the Knights come in two varieties. There's going to be the Knight and Knight Paladin and the Knight Errant. Uh, if you can guess, the Knight Paladin is going to be long range. The Knight Errant is going to be close range. Although you're going to find out that there's really no such thing as close range with these guys' weapons, okay? I mean you're talking about, oh, it's 72 inches. Oh, close range is half that. Not really. Oh, uh, so here we go. Uh, the Knight Paladin is going to come with three weapons. A heavy stubber. A rapid fire battle cannon. Yes, it's a battle cannon that's going to be firing twice a turn. Uh, and a Reaper chain sword. So heavy stubber, you're talking about strength four, AP six, heavy three. Rapid fire battle cannon. Strength 8, AP2, AP3, sorry, uh, Ordnance 2, Large Blast. Reaper Chainsword, melee weapon, is a Strength D, AP2. And now here's one of the special rules for the walkers, which you're going to be learning about. Ion Shield. Ion Shield. Basically, every turn you have to choose a facing for the shield front left or right and rear i'm almost certain they have a rear too i hope so and when you choose that facing that's at the beginning of your opponent's turn 
you choose your facing. Beginning of your opponent's turn, choose your facing. And what happens is, is that anything in that field of arc firing at you, only firing at you, you get a 4 plus invul save. 4 plus invulnerable save for anything in that arc of front, left, right, or rear. This does not work in melee. Does not work in melee. It is only for firing shots. Next, let's see what we can do. Uh, they also come with a, a, with a bunch of the standard special rules. Uh, they cause fear. <laughs> they get Hammer of Wrath when they charge, although only one attack. Uh, Carnifexes get up to three, but this guy, he gets one. Um, Invincible Behemoth, he's got move through cover. He's relentless. He gets Smash, although I don't know why you would use it because they're already strength 10 and you're not going to double that, So, but it gets Smash uh, and Strike Down. Boom. Okay, I mean, boom. That's what they are. They are large, nasty things. Um, wow. The, now we're going to focus on the Knight Errant. The Knight Errant is a little different. I actually kind of like the Knight Errant better because, you know, there's not too many times which I really need a 72-inch range too often. This guy does not have to be scared of being blown up on turn one. So, blah. Uh, let's see. The Knight Errant, um, a little di different. He still has the Heavy Stubber. Uh, he still has a Reaper Chain Sword, but he switches out his the, the, the Rapid Fire Battle Cannon for what's called a Thermal Cannon, which is a giant multi-melta, basically. Okay? It's a giant multi-melta that's going to have a heavy one, large blast, Melta. Heavy one, large, blast, Melta. It has a 36-inch range, okay? So that means, <laughs> yes, half that, half that, it gets the Melta effect. Many people would consider that to already be normal range. But yes, at half of 36, 18, it, it, it's, it'll, 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 it'll get Melta. So, tanks, everybody like that, yeah, screw you. Smag you, you're out, okay? This guy gets within 18-inch ranges of... <laughs> wow. Exciting stuff. Um, exciting stuff. This is the guy that they've designed to get into hand-to-hand -hand with. Now, let's get into some particularities in terms of the tactics session. Now that I've discussed this other side, let's talk tactics. I've looked at it closely, and here's what I found that's interesting. These guys have a special rule that says, basically, uh, they can fire all their weapons no matter how much they move. Not only can they fire all their weapons, they can fire him at different targets. Ha! Ha! What does that mean, you say, other than it just being cool all by itself? Well, like you know, these guys have chain swords. They're really designed to get into some hand-to-hand -hand and start chopping things up into little pieces. And here's the interesting thing. Since they can, the only other people who can really fire at different uh, targets are Tau. And they don't have any hand-to-hand -hand units, so this doesn't matter to them as much. But when you fire at it, and you know you have to assault the unit that you shoot at, yes, you do. But this is interesting here. Because if you're shooting three different units, you basically get to choose. You get to choose who you're going to assault. Keep your options open. So you might actually just want to shoot at three different units just so they don't know who you're going to attack. Wouldn't that be cool? It's sneaky. I know. I've only had this thing for an hour to read it and bring you your sneak peek and overview of it. That's the first thing that comes into my mind when I saw that. I can also see these guys, like I said, when you can feel them in, in, in a unit up to three with your detachment, I'm thinking about how much these are going to change those other armies. I don't know if you're watching it, but I have a whole series out there on Sisters of Battle. Try to imagine now Sisters of Battle with their detachment of, of super heavy walkers. 
Boom. Boom. That's all I can say. That was my quick overview. Please like it and thumbs up, and I'll be bringing you the first release on everything that comes out when I can get my hands on it. Keep watching. See you next time.